Okay, dietary sugar and cancer. Does dietary sugar cause or fuel cancer? In order to get at this question, we have to talk first about why people think it might. And the first piece of evidence that people often use is PET scans. So PET scans is where you have a labeled version of a glucose molecule that can be seen inside of a scanner through the body. So through, I think, a radioactive label. Um, this glucose molecule is taken up by the cell, um, by cancer cells specifically, uh, much higher quantities than the surrounding tissue. And so because it's taken up by cancer cells in much higher quantities than the surrounding tissues, uh, the cancer cells light up on the scan, um, very much in contrast to what the surrounding tissues do. From this, one inf can infer that um, if you decrease the availability of, of sugar, of glucose, to the cancer cells, then perhaps they'll not be able to fuel themselves as well, because they're taking up glucose at a much higher rate, and that's to fuel their growth. So, and that's why you can see them on the PET scan. So if you stop giving them glucose, then they're not going to be fueled as well, they're not going to be fed as well, they're not going to be able to grow as much. And so from this you get this idea that, okay, if you, like, we want to decrease our sugar in order to decrease cancer growth. Here's some of the problems with that. First of all, on an isocaloric basis, so if you just switch a low carb for, or sorry, a high carb for a low carb diet, you don't change protein, you don't change fiber, you don't change anything else. Of course, in the real world, this isn't how it works. Usually you do increase protein and other things, so you might get more of an effect if you are, especially if you are very adherent. But um, all else equal, you're gonna get about a 10% drop in blood glucose. Um, that means if you don't uh, lose weight either. If you lose weight, if you increase protein, you do all these other things, then you're gonna get a much more substantial drop in average blood glucose. But you're gonna get about a 10% drop in blood glucose, which translates, if you have an HbA1c of about five, you're gonna go from five to 4.5, say. Uh, although that would be quite a drop and, and quite a starting point, but that's essentially um, how, how much blood glucose will drop in that particular case, about 10%. Uh, so in that case, okay, hey, maybe you'll get a 10% decrease in, in, in growth rate, or maybe, maybe even some, something smaller, or maybe a little bit larger, but maybe you'll get a modest decrease in growth rate. Well, the problem is if you look at the parental studies, um, so they feed people uh, through a tube. I think they feed them directly into the stomach if you look at these studies, or maybe even into the bloodstream, I'm not sure, but they feed, but they feed people fatty acids or, or glucose in these studies, and they look at the rate of tumor growth, I think over the course of several days or even like a couple of weeks, they see no difference in, in the tumor growth. So these things have actually been directly studied uh, in these studies. Um, we don't have any long-term trials in humans looking at the ketogenic diet versus, say, um, Actually, we do have some. We actually do have some studies looking at ketogenic diet versus higher carb diet or standard American diet for glioblastoma. We see no difference in growth. We have case studies that show a difference in growth, but those can be confounded by selection bias and all sorts of other problems. They're not good evidence. So there's no good evidence. In fact, most of the evidence that we do have seems to suggest there's no difference in growth whenever you give people a ketogenic diet. Well, if you look at some animal studies, yeah, in some animal studies, if you give people, uh, animals a ketogenic diet, sometimes the tumors will grow more slowly, but these studies are also often confounded by other things, so the protein often isn't matched, the fiber isn't matched, and sometimes even whenever you don't match those things, you still see an enhanced growth of tumor on the ketogenic diet versus the control diet, suggesting that um, even whenever you restrict protein, you can still see enhanced growth, and this is because tumors actually, some tumors uh, take up more fatty acids um, than, than, the, than the surrounding tissue, much like glucose. They'll, they'll, they metabolize fatty acids, they're fueled by fatty acids. Same thing goes with ketones. They'll, some tumors are fueled by ketones. Some tumors, um, some tumors, in fact, the ketones uh, uh, interact with certain signaling molecules inside the tumors and then uh, enhance the uh, signaling effects of those signaling molecules. And, and uh, ketones can thereby cause and enhance tumor growth in those cases. So it's not at all clear that a low carb diet or a ketogenic diet uh, would necessarily in human tumors um, cause a slower tumor growth just because you're decreasing uh, blood glucose by a modest amount. In fact, they might actually fuel the tumors because the tumors are not just driven by glucose metabolism. And that's really super, 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 super important to understand. Um, 
And that's the state of the field right now. We don't really understand how a ketogenic diet works, works for cancer. Uh, if somebody tells you that you should use a ketogenic diet for cancer, and especially if they tell you if you should use it without chemotherapy, there's no good evidence for that. And uh, if they tell you if, that you should use it without chemotherapy, um, that's criminal because uh, they're telling you to forego a, a, an effective treatment in favor of one that, that there is absolutely no evidence for. And that, in those cases, that's very dangerous. But in the cases where people say, oh, too Sugar fuels tumor growth, so therefore stop eating sugar, stop eating carbohydrate. There's no evidence for this, and uh, that's considered partially dangerous, or, or, or sorry, potentially dangerous, possibly dangerous, in the framework that I have set up here, um, because it encourages you to use a fad diet, and then perhaps even sometimes in some cases forego medical treatment, or maybe even use a fad diet which has its own inherent uh, risks associated with it. So um, people who say can't, sugar fuels tumor, sugar feeds tumor, these people are going to get added to the list, and so I'm going to include this video when I add any of those people to the list. Um, if anybody has any corrections on any of the details, uh, please let me know. I'll try to link some of the papers that I cited in this video on the list, and hopefully um, we can get a good discussion around this. If not, uh, which we probably won't, uh, we can at least... You can at least get some more people added onto the list, the, the sugar feeds cancer people, which there's just no evidence for. So thanks for watching.